An end to the floods in Bangkok. Pools are being made for monkeys. And the last story is something that I can only call harmful sausages. That's all coming up on today's Good Morning Thailand. Hello and welcome to Good Morning Thailand, sponsored by Coffee Culture and Twin Palms Residences Montezor. Ladies and gentlemen, back by popular demand. Hello. It's Natu Arisa. Oh, we have a special guest. We, who's our special guest? I was not told of this. What is this? Henrietta. Oh, there we go. Of course, Henrietta is back. Yes. That was the special guest. <laughs> the special guest, That was yes. a great bit. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. As always, we have timestamps on the video after the live video, so you can skip to the part where we briefly talk about news. How are you feeling today, Natty? Second time this week? What's going on? I know. I feel like maybe the audience are getting a little bit of overdose of Natty now. Overdose of Natty? <laughs> yeah. Is it possible? We don't know. But yeah. yes, welcome back. It's a Tuesday. Uh, so Tim is on his way. He's right now on a plane. Wow. You okay. could call him and possibly reach him. On the plane? Yeah. Technology. Technology. He's always available to the yes. Tiger staff. <laughs> All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, couple of topics uh, to talk about today. Nothing really too serious. So there's no news on Omicron. Mm -mm. And there's no, uh, well, not really news on Ukraine or Russia. So it's mm. a... It's a fairly positive news cycle today. Oh, that's good. Or at least the things that I'm going to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. The first being, there might be a possible end to the floods in Bangkok, Natty. What? Wow. That's music to my ears. Well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it hasn't, you know. Oh. Like everything in Thailand, uh, it hasn't been fully full steam ahead. It is still going to happen, but possibly in two years. Oh. Now, the Bangkok governor, Kun Aswin Kwan Meung, on Monday, uh, he came out and made some bold claims saying that, hey, we're going to fix the annual flood problems and, uh, yeah, we're go they're basically going to make water banks underground in specific areas where there is uh, usually a lot of floods. And uh, that underground um, water bank is going to collect all the money, uh, all the money, <laughs> all <laughs> well, the water, okay. and uh, basically relieve water flooding from mm -hmm. the cities well, what do you think about that i mean if they actually manage to do it that's really good news because thailand has been having this problem for decades i remember growing up as a little kid walking through knee high well i was a kid also so knee high water levels in bangkok and this is the capital of a country that shouldn't happen yeah i don't know why i just imagined you walking out of your house and just stepping outside and going plop. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but uh, it might sound funny, however, um, yes, it has had some massive flooding. I remember there was one time, remember when the, all those floods came from the north and Bangkok was basically shut down for like a couple of weeks or months? Yes, I remember that very vividly. That was maybe five years ago, yeah. right? Well, yeah, or a no, bit no, 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 it's no about longer. six or seven years ago. Right. So I was in university at that time, and I remember even though my university was near in Salaya, which is on the outskirts of Bangkok, mm -hmm. even we had to be basically evacuated yes. because there would be no restaurants and no way to get food. So uh, I, was, I just ran back to Phuket as quickly as I could. Right, yeah. and there was also this time where a lot of cars had to park on the highways. Yeah. Remember, that That's time right. was insane. Shopping malls and like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Wow. But yes, uh, hopefully, uh, the uh, in this actually project started in 2018, and the construction for the first two of the four underground retention uh, tanks has already begun, with the aim of building four in total. Now, uh, the four of them will be, the first one will be under a flyover on Rachada Pisek Road, uh, which is near the Chathujak district. So you can have safe night market, well, safe Chathujak uh, market shopping without the worry of floods, uh, as well as in Bangkapi district, Bangkan roundabout and Asok Dindang road. Oh, Asok as well, that's good. Yeah, so, so they have targeted like highly populated areas as well as where there's a lot of traffic mm -hmm. and congestion. So hopefully this doesn't take them six or 10 years to make. They've said it's going to take another two years and let's hope that it does take another two years because uh, many times things don't often go to plan. Right. 
Uh, Kamal, you've got a question. Oh yeah, no, no, it's just a correction. So the floods that you were trying to recall, it was not six years ago, it was actually 11 years ago. 11 years ago. Yeah, wow. 2011 when that happened. It's my refusal to admit that I've <laughs> aged. <laughs> Same here. 11 years ago. Oh yeah, yeah that makes sense That's though. a long time ago. Oh yeah, I was still in university at that time. I was in middle school. You were oh. in middle school. Oh wait, you can't, gave you're, away. are you 42? Right. Are you yes, a middle, you're a middle school teacher, yeah. Yeah, yeah, middle school yeah. teacher, yeah. <laughs> All right, right. Um, our second topic today, Nettie, is regarding AirAsia. AirAsia, okay. Everybody loves AirAsia, right? Yeah, we love to fly. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, AirAsia Thailand is to resume flights to seven countries in April. Ooh. Yay. Yay. I don't really know how to feel about that. I mean, that is part of the news today, but uh, yeah, they'll be flying from three airports, Don mm. Mueang, Phuket International Airport, and the third one was a bit of a wowzer, Hat Yai International Airport. Oh, the Hat Yai one. Why? Oh. Why did they not pick, I don't know, Chiang Mai? I actually like, Hat Yai is quite a populated city, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Most it, of the south actually go to Hat Yai and then, and then it's, it's either Hat there. Yai or Phuket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know a lot of uh, Chinese immigrants also migrated to Hat Yai as well. So there's oh, a okay. huge Chinese population there as well. I was surprised. Mm -hmm. I thought they would be focusing more on like Chiang Mai or places, mm -hmm. but they've just, uh, yeah, the airports they'll be flying to um, are those three airports. And mm -hmm. besides that, uh, they will uh, reinstate up to 81 flights per week um, mm -hmm. in by May in support of the nation's economic recovery as well. Wow. well. That's anyways, that's what they've said, that we want to help the Thai, the Thai economy come back. Mm -hmm. Does that make you want to fly? Does that make you want to be like, oh, I want to travel to Hat Yai? Ah, or, or anywhere, you know? Anywhere. I guess, uh, uh, if I had to be honest, like yeah. I'm kind of missing traveling a little bit. Okay. I haven't traveled much actually at all ever since the pandemic came so i'm stuck in bangkok for most of the time so yeah maybe a little bit i, I kind of do right. want to fly somewhere well Asia has also said that they, they, re they want to resume routes um mm -hmm. to countries that share thailand's reopening policy um uh, which will and you know the bubbles and this and that um and uh, starting april air asia will fly from don Muang to places like hanoi ho chi minh city bali Kuala Lumpur, Penang, Bangalore, and Chennai. Mm. Phuket, Singapore, and Hat Yai, Kuala Lumpur. Mm. Okay, so they, well, they've basically focused on ASEAN and South Asian countries. Mm -hmm. um, and starting May, they'll be flying Bangkok to Kolkata, Kochi, Jaipur, very uh, popular destination for Thai people, uh, Da Nang in Vietnam, Johar Bahru in Malaysia, and Siam Reap. Mm. Siam Reap from Cambodia. So how many. do you say that? Siem Reap. I don't know how to say it in the English pronunciation, oh, okay. but in Thai it's Siem Reap. Right? Siem Reap. Yeah. yeah, that's how I know in Thai, but in English it would be Siem Reap. Siem Reap. Siem Reap. All right. I'm not sure. Anyways, shall we go on to the next topic? Yes, we shall. All right. So uh, if you are looking forward to travel around Asia, you can fly with Air Asia. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Truly Asia. Now, talking about traveling. Uh, two food delivery drivers have been doing something very naughty, Natty. Yeah. Now, I'm not gonna. You know, I have thought about this before. I'll tell you the news first. Now, two okay. food delivery drivers were arrested in Bangkok for allegedly transporting ketamine and methamphetamine to customers. Wow. The suspects allegedly confessed to trafficking, trafficking the drugs for two years. Two years. So they were using their food delivery service or platform. you know what wow. a platform <laughs> to transport drugs how did you order that in the first place hmm i'd like two bags of ketamine no i think it was just a rouge like they ah, they, they, they sign up for the thing and maybe they make one delivery a day but then yeah. they get the shirts they get mm -hmm. the you know the bike pouch and everything yeah and then they just use that as like they'll never be stopped they're just delivering food True. so people wouldn't suspect them yes it's actually a genius way to <laughs> deliver anything really hell jay's getting ideas now no, i've always thought about this i was like what <laughs> isn't that i mean how else would they transfer <laughs> drugs? Right. Right. Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is this the only drug that they transport in Bangkok? Possibly. <laughs> yeah, and they I get those coolers. I can't reveal too much. No, but, you know, 
who's going to stop you? If, you? if you're wearing a grab jacket right. or food panda jacket or whatever food delivery mm -hmm. service and no one's going to stop you and check your pouch. Like, you, you think the police is going to stop and be like, oh, that's suspicious. They don't have dogs on the street, like, barking when they smell drugs or right. anything. Um, the reason they actually got caught, um, let me tell you, officers from the Ch Children and Women Protection Subdivision arrested nine people. And what happened was... Uh, they arrested nine people who were doing drugs. Mm. And they were like, hey, where do you guys get your drugs? Mm -hmm. Because they didn't seem like, you know, like obviously they were hard uh, druggies. And uh, they, they, seized druggies. About, okay. yeah, they seized about 420 pills from them. And they're like, wow. wait, you probably don't have access to this. Where did you get this from? Mm -hmm. And basically they confessed that, oh, we bought these drugs off food delivery riders. Right. And they were like, what? Yeah. And then officers in Bangkok tracked down those two delivery drive, two uh, food delivery drivers, uh, twenty-two year old and twenty-one year old. Okay, entrepreneurs. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, sure. Okay. And they confess that they've been smuggling drugs, uh, drugs for the last twenty years. Uh, they would pick up the drug from a dealer and keep it at their house until the customers contacted them mm -hmm. to make a purchase. They shared that they received around fifty thousand baht per month. Cool. Wow. Okay. So I guess they were the middleman. They'd buy it from a. Proper, wholesaler. Proper, yeah, wholesaler. <laughs> what is going basically. on? Basically. Yes. <laughs> they would buy it from a wholesaler. They would wait for a personal call. Mm -hmm. I guess it's all personal contact or word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And that they would go in their delivery service mm -hmm. outfit and go give the drug. I mean, right. is it wrong? Absolutely. Should they be in jail? Yes. Is it a genius idea? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? Jay's impressed no, by mean, this news. I mean, yes. Who would suspect that you're a Grab Food delivery driver? True, that's true. Or, or, you, or you know, whatever you use, Grubhub, Food Panda. Right. The guy's a part-time methamphetamine dealer. Yeah. He doesn't even need to do this job. Yeah. He's just doing it for appearances. Yeah. It's, that's a hobby. I feel you... like everyone's just going to be wary now. Every time they're going to look at their Grab Food delivery driver and be like, does he? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I see your hands. Anyways. And uh, once the officers went to their house, uh, the t two drug dealers, they found uh, 300 ecstasy pills, 34,000 amphetamine pills, Jesus, <laughs> 3 kilograms of methamphetamine, 1.197 kilogram of ketamine, two bank accounts, three mobile phones, and two Yamaha NMAX motorbikes, which had food delivery boxes at the back. Mm. I find it interesting they that they all... It's a lifestyle. Why do they always say the number of mobile phones, though? Oh, because they do transactions on there, maybe. I guess. Uh, I guess, yeah. Because yeah. they always say the it number of drugs one. and then the mobile phones. Yeah. And I was like, why, why, why mobile phones? Because it's important. They didn't just take calls on one phone. Yeah. They had two phones. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Very busy. Okay. Don't you just love being presented <laughs> by news by us? <laughs> I'm very professional. Let's yes. move on. Let's take a quick break. Once we come back from the break, we'll be talking about amazing stories like harmful sausages, uh, swimming pools for monkeys, as well as Sizzlers doing, raising their prices. What's, the, what's all that about? Find out more after the break. And welcome back after that long, refreshing break. Hello. Hello, that's Henrietta. <laughs> it's going hello. And Natty is obsessed. <laughs> uh, I'd like to give a quick uh, shout out to Coffee Culture. You can buy uh, 18 different type of roasters coffees, uh, more than 200 types of coffees and flavors. Visit coffeeculture.asia. Mm. As well as you can now buy your own personal property at Twin Palms Residences Montezor and live the good life. Wow. Think about it. In Kamala Phuket. That's all. It's now time for two <laughs> minutes, Thailand. Okay. We're off the rails today, Nadi. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? It's Tuesday. <laughs> Where is the professionalism? Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. All right, two minutes, Thailand, ladies and gentlemen. This is where you get to learn about different aspects of Thailand, as well as the culture. Uh, today we're uh, today we're going to be talking about not me personally, but Nan. Don't worry. Hashtag free Nan. Uh, Nan will be talking about shadow puppets, also known as Nang Talung Talung, right? Nang yeah, Talung. Nang Talung. When Nan first sent this to me, it said 
Nang, uh, I read it because she wrote it in uh, English Thai. So she, I read it as Nang Talung. I knew it. And I was okay. like, why are you doing it on Nang Talung? <laughs> on porn? N- yeah, for, <laughs> basically. <laughs> nang, nang Talung would be porn. I'm like, why is she talking about Thai porn? That's not something we want to talk about. But no, it's shadow puppets. So learn more about Nang Talung. Yeah. Today I will tell you about our traditional in the south of Thailand, Nang Palung. Nang Palung is the traditional shadow puppetry play, which is the favorite folk entertainment for people in the southern of Thailand. It has become the symbol of the local life in that region. There are many different theories about the origin of Nang Talung. From the evidence we have, it is believed that it is one of the puppetry arts dated from the Sivishai or Tampoling Kingdom era. Other theories believe that it is derived from the Javanese Wayang Kuli in Indonesia. And some people believe that Nang Talung originated in the early Ratanakosin period and was adapted from Nang Yai, the central Thailand shadow play. Nang Talung suffered in Pat Talung province. Nang means letter, and Talung is an abbreviation of Pat Talung. It was performed in Bangkok for the first time during King Rama III's reign when Zhao Praya Pat Talung brought the troop to perform in Nang Leung sub-district. The shadow puppets are flagged in shape and handcraft from letter. The puppetry sits behind a thin white curtain with the light behind them projecting the shadow of the puppet for the audience to see. Originally, an oil lamp was used, but a simple electric bomb is unknown these days. There are also a group of people who play folk musical instruments during the performance. You must watch this show once in your lifetime. Please come to check it out in the south of Thailand. And welcome back. Have you ever watched a Nang Talung? I have never watched one, but I used to have one of those puppets. Oh. And I kid you not, the Nang or the uh, skin, the leather, smelled like animal skin. Oh. Like you can you can smell the cow on it. Wow. Like moo, you know. And it was very hard to move the arms in coordination because when I did it, it was like going everywhere, like noodle arms. It's kind of fun. You're so dark, Nanny. <laughs> what? You look like a fun-loving, I you am. know, happy Asian lady. But and then <laughs> there's like a dark side to you, isn't there? <laughs> Why? But I- I'm talking about puppets and dolls and. Move. Yeah, but before you said the cute parts, you said, <laughs> I could smell the animal on it as I moved it. Well, it's true. You should smell one of those Nang Talung uh, puppets. I'm good. <laughs> I have seen it, though. I've had the pleasure to watch it in the South. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on. <laughs> okay, that's it. Right. Uh, Natty, do you want to talk about harmful sausages? I love harmful sausages stories. Um, okay, so... Uh, about 14 kids actually across Thailand have suffered from a fatal blood disorder after eating sausages, weirdly. Oh. And so they did, the Thai FDA did some investigation and they found 20 manufacturers uh, kind of doing substandard sausages. Okay. Mm-hmm. And now they are facing fines and penalties for using harmful amounts of substances in these sausages. Now, the FDA took samples from 102 brands nationwide and found out that 44 samples tested, like, so far, uh, how to call it, um, the food preser- preservatives inside it, which is the nitrate, exceeded the legal limit of 80 milligrams per kilogram. And those are kind of harmful, and they can create some kind of blood, blood situation. What's it called? Blood Speci- clots. Yeah. Okay. And huh. And also, so they're warning people to kind of, when you buy sausages, make sure that they have an official FDA stamp on the packaging, as well as other information on it. Check the expiration date, the manufacturing date, and the ingredients. 
Well, I think that would only apply if you're buying it from places like even 7-Eleven. Yes, you can buy the sausage and like CP has those popular ones. I guess you could look for those stamps. But most people, you know, we have so many things with sausage on street foods. Mm -hmm. So like it's it's the younger generation, obviously, that you're talking about. Like normally kids would finish school, they'd come outside and then you'd have like your lan tokiao or like mm. you, you know like your local vendor on a on a street uh movable cart or your your local uh street shop and then they sell you these tokia which is like um what is tokia it's the the pancake girl yeah so oh yeah the, the pan if anyone remembers the pancake so it's like it's a pancake and then they put on top either egg or minced chicken or the one of the most popular one is sausage mm -hmm. and it's that pink color or red color sausage made with awful parts of meat i don't even know if there's any meat in there and that's the thing that actually the kids get addicted to because it's like their street food it's something that they have as soon as they finish school and uh that is a real problem that needs to get out of our streets it's just basically shit food it's like right. garbage for your body yeah and um you know it's like coke oh whoa that's a <laughs> harsh comparison <laughs> no but you know what i mean like like that sausage is awful, but it's sold everywhere in Thailand. And they, yeah, they definitely don't have any FDA approving. Who knows who makes them, where they buy it from. Yeah. Yeah, I, you've, I you've, agree. I've had those sausages before. Have you? I'm going to say that I actually like the pinker, the better. The more pink, the more puffy they are. To me, it tastes so good, <laughs> but they're so bad for it you. It does taste good. It probably yeah. has MSG in it. it probably Tons. like if you horse knows feed, what horse foot thing. Hoods. Yeah, I don't know. It's just made with like the most worst food materials possible. Kamal, you've got a comment. Yes, uh, Jelly Roll Johnson is asking, what brand of sausages are you guys talking about? Like the one that was being manufactured. Was there a specific brand? They would not disclose which brands uh, didn't that were not passed, but mm. they just said vaguely 22 vendors are now uh, being fined. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I saw a comment on the live chat saying that they might not be sausages, they might be wieners or hot dogs. Uh, yes, mm. Carmel. There's another one, Sick Puppy said that if anyone goes to a factory and observe how sausages are made, they would never ever yeah. eat one again. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just made from the parts that nobody really eats, it's just like mashed up together, it's quite gross. Yeah. But, but you know it's it's that feeling like um to for anyone you know maybe it's part of american culture having a hot dog you know mm. depending on where you grow up it's like a classic american hot dog it's like your street food snack yeah just like that in thailand you can find those sausages everywhere yeah. you know yeah yeah but this needs to stop natty yes i well jason actually our one of our cameramen said that these are hot dogs they're not sausages okay. so stop calling them sausages He's hot doggo. So okay. He got offended. All right. right. So, okay, so they're hot dogs. They're All right. Hot dogs. Yeah. So stop eating cheap hot on a, on yeah cheap hot dogs in Thailand. Yes. Buy the one from Seven Eleven. Even those are not good for health. But if you must, yeah. go to Seven Eleven or a proper meat butcher shop. Meat butcher shop. All right. A butcher shop. Yes. Why must you correct me, Nettie? No, no. Why do you hurt me like this? I know hurts. <laughs> I know okay. why. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, the, our last two topics for today. Uh, firstly, now, Nettie, we went to Pattaya. Mm -hmm. Tell you a quick story. Uh, the first day we were there, you know, we did the show at Glow Pattaya. Uh, very nice show. Amazing hotel. And then we thought, you know, let's go out and see what Pattaya has to offer. So we're like, let's go have some nice seafood by the beach. So we went to the closest beach that was uh, probably not the liveliest beach. It was the one with Walking Street on it. So I'm mm -hmm. getting that's the Pattaya Beach. Uh, the first beach that we went to and we got out of the car and we're like, oh, let's go have some seafood. A lot of the shops were unfortunately closed. Oh. Uh, we saw some Italian restaurants closed, some 7-Eleven closed down. And then we ended up in a mall which was basically a roadside mall. I, I don't know what was the mall called again. I forgot, but it had a Taco Bell. It had Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, I love that place. Okay, go on. And uh, the restaurant we ended up having was Sizzler. Okay. Yeah. We, that was a long detour. Okay, so default. you went to Sizzler. All right. That's right. And and now, in, in today's headlines, I saw that SLRT, the operator of Sizzler Steak Restaurant, 
under the Minor Food Group, um, which owns hotels and other food chains, is going to increase its prices by 10%. Oh. And if this would have happened while we were there, it would have completely ruined our party experience. <laughs> right. What would we have done? Eat pink sausages. Basically. So that would not be good. But yes, <laughs> anyways, uh, Sizzler has decided to increase their costs up uh, to up by 10%. They've said they have been struggling. Uh, mm. They've actually noted, um, you know, the price of inflation and the, the Ukraine-Russia conflict has increased prices for a lot of things. Uh, their operation costs has been increased by 30%. And uh, as well as, you know, COVID pandemic hasn't helped them. So they've decided to increase their um, some items by 10%. That's weird that this made it to the news. Like, who would want to PR this? Hey, we're increasing our prices. Come and I, come that's, to the Sizzler. That's exactly what I thought. That's something that you'd like to, you know, keep it down on the hush hush. Right, because ten percent um, on the grander schemes of things is not gonna really be that noticeable. I I don't think on yeah. the menu. So yeah. But now but, that they said it publicly, I'm like, okay, now. Hmm, are you a fan of Sizzler? Um, can I be honest? I love their salad bars. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I just go for the salad bars. That's what you do. That's yeah. what any smart person does. You go to Sizzler, you buy the cheapest steak, which is like what, two, their promotion was 200 baht, and then you get the salad bar for free. Right. You know what I really love you to do stuff though? Stuff yourself with vegetables. Well, I love to stuff myself with salad. those jellies. Oh, and, but I before see. eating those jellies, because they come in perfect cubes, yeah. I would cut letters out, like N-A-T-T-Y, and like have it displayed first and then eat it, and then look at the servers, yum, yum, yum. eating my own name. That's what I used to do when I was 11, but now I don't do that Sure, anymore. when you were 11. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. Whatever <laughs> floats your boat, Natty. <laughs> Kamal's a fan of uh, Sizzler. I saw you yeah. getting excited. Yeah, I just go there for the salad bar, like order the cheapest thing, like you said. <laughs> but then I, I go there for the dessert, the chocolate. Oh, the mousse, it, right? Mousse, yes, mousse. Yeah, yeah, I go the for that. It's not bad. That one. It's yeah, not it's, bad. Not bad. Really good. it's not bad. This is not a promotion for Sizzler, by <laughs> no. the way. But as, yeah, a sick puppy who I met in Paria, um, he's got strong opinions on it. He thinks Sizzler is a no-go, and mm. he would rather have Taco Bell. And actually, we were advised by Adam, who we met the next day, uh, who's the co-owner of the Paria News. He also said that, no, you should have gone for Taco Bell. I think Taco Bell is universally loved by all Americans. It's an American <laughs> thing, possibly. Yes. Um, but yeah. I, I love the pockets uh, from Taco Bell, like the huge pockets. Yum yum. Well, I Taco Bell. I had Taco Bell for the first time in my life when I moved to Bangkok. Whoa! We, we don't have Taco Bell in Phuket. Well, right. I'll tell you one thing. One thing I noticed, like coming, you know, living in Phuket my whole life, Pattaya is really developed. Right. Okay. I went to that Terminal Twenty One Mall. It was huge. Really? Okay. Possibly bigger than our Twenty One uh, Terminal Twenty One in in Asok. Okay. It was huge. It was really. I don't know, and, and like we're going around Pattaya, like they have so many malls and zoos and water parks, and I'm like, what the hell does Phuket have? Right. They have Taco Bell. What does Phuket have? <laughs> Nothing. Some weird Mex, not weird, but like some expen overly expensive Mexican wrap. I don't want a 500 baht wrap. I want a 50 baht Taco Bell wrap. But you guys it's value for money. You guys while make I it up trash. with Kata Beach, though. Sorry? Kata Beach. Katak Beach. What about Katak Beach? Well, you make it up with Katak Beach. That that just. We have nice beach. Yes. Yeah. There but we go. No, I, I was genuinely uh, surprised that like there's so many developments. Like they have tall skyscrapers and like mm. these amazing, beautiful buildings that you can like rent or buy properties in, and they have so many malls and they just got so much going on for them. Right. I, I guess maybe they need it because their beach might not be as beautiful as the beaches in Phuket, but. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fun stuff to do in that city. I love Ripley's. I know you mentioned it once, but I... That's like 20 years old now. No, dude, like, no, I, I, uh, I went there ever since I was 20, and I have not stopped going there still. And I see the same exact things every single time, <laughs> and, and I get excited. And you every time. Yeah. Okay. That's the bar. That's the level. <laughs> Na Natty's just easily entertained. And I that's am okay. easily entertained. And that's okay. All right, our last story today. Uh, <laughs> by the way, that, that Sizzler news had no news information or any value, really, but uh, it's a fun <laughs> it was just throwing. something to talk about. Yes. Our last topic, though, is more important. Mm -hmm. It is regarding swimming pools that have been built 
for monkeys in Lopburi. Now, Nettie, why would they build swimming pools for monkeys? Well, you know, and I think Nan covered this I in know. her, <laughs> of course, clearly. Yeah. No, but Nan covered this in her two minute Thailand segment that Lopburi is kind of famous for the overpopulated monkey the population. The macaw monkeys. Macaw. Ma yeah. Macaque. Macaw? Macaque. Ma macaque. Macaque? Monkeys. Just monkeys, okay. Yeah. Um, and these monkeys, because they're so big, they kind of separate themselves into groups. Okay. And one group kind of goes to, they kind of, how do you call it, guard the ruins? The temples. The, the temple yeah. ruins. Temple and monkeys. the other ones are just on the streets. And these yeah. two always clash. Okay. Now, authorities have seen like these monkey wars being a little bit more rampant during the heat season, during, during the summer. The summer. Okay. So they built pools, like little pools around the area to cool them down. Okay, so they can have a nice bath and Yeah, to cool stuff. down. Okay. And apparently it's working, so there's less fights now. The only mm -hmm. thing is that I see the monkeys inside there bathing, and then some of them are drinking the water. If th those were humans, they would get salmonella, I think. Because there's a lot of feet and bodies. And Possibly. It's kind of not So they're hygienic. drinking the water after they clean themselves in it. Yeah. That's pretty That nasty. water in that picture, if you're looking, doesn't look like something you'd want to drink as well. But, nah. Uh, but anyways, um, that is a fun and creative way to avoid a problem between the monkeys. Stop war. Swim instead. Maybe they should build that for people in Thailand mm. before you drive. Because people, when they drive here, um, I don't know, they, they seem to get very aggressive and then they go on to roads and injure people. So if we have tubs for people to dip yeah. themselves in, then get on a motorbike or in your fancy car and then drive in Bangkok, maybe it'll lessen accidents. Or just tubs at the big intersections. Yeah. So it's the red light. Yeah. It's like most red lights are only for like two minutes. Yeah. And so then you, excuse me, uh, you stop at the red light, you drown, not drown yourself, you drench yourself in water, you cool off, you say, oof. Yeah. It's a good life. And then you get because out. Because they clearly don't have AC in their car. Yes. It's for motorbikes. <laughs> yep. That Creative, is, Natty. Yeah, Very thank you. Natty for president. <laughs> These are I think I'm the decisions <laughs> we need our governments <laughs> oh, to gosh. make. And Natty Warisa represents not something we want, but something we need. Pool baths for all. Right. That's my slogan. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. Once we come back from the break, please let us know if you have any questions regarding any of the topics we've said today or, or if something you'd like to ask uh, me, Natty, Carmel, Noom. Let us know. We'll be back right after this. And welcome back to Good Morning Thailand. It's now time to answer some of your questions. Carmel, you've got something to say. Oh, yes. Uh, Nadi K. Samui, a member uh, that's uh, someone that's been a member for two months, is asking if he can get a shout out. K. Samui. K. Samui, oh. hi. <laughs> Thank you for watching the show. Um, glad to have you as our uh, member here. Yay. He's cool. Thank I've you. A, I've actually spoken to him on uh, Discord a couple oh, really? of times. Yeah, he's a cool oh, guy. Cool. I think he's in America right now. Hmm. I'm not sure though. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, any other questions, Kamal? On the topic of Air Asia, Damien Jesser said that Air Asia sucks. I'm sorry. If oh, you're no. if over six feet, it is a pain. If you're over six feet, I think the height. Well, if, yeah. if I'm uh, since I am over six feet, no matter Did whether I trouble? go in Air Asia or Vietjet or anywhere. But he's not wrong. Air Asia is notorious. The seats are notoriously really close. <laughs> You know, they were the ones who invented cheap travel, basically, you know, because mm. so, um, I don't know about the other American airlines, but yeah, in Asia anyway. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I find it very difficult to sit on those Air Asia <laughs> seats, but it's the sacrifices we make Yes. for um, cheap travel. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Carmel. LVTV um, said that Natty appreciates dealers' entrepreneurship. 
which is the topic on the gra- grad yeah oh the well delivery man. delivery, delivery yeah. Man. yeah yeah i i do <laughs> i i like creative people um but probably better if you didn't do anything illicit yeah yes. illegal don't, illegal, don't do anything illegal yeah. guys just do the right thing yes do the right thing Wait, is that Russell Peters? <laughs> it is Russell Peters. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, PG Santa was curious, uh, since we are still relatively young, uh, what percent of people our age do we think uses illegal substances in Thailand? <laughs> our age. But the thing is, it's very different. I'm already. 72, so I have no idea. Um, I'm 42, apparently. I know 50% or more of my friends do some form of drugs. Mild drugs. <laughs> and they're not in Thailand. All right. Yeah, definitely yes. not in Thailand. <laughs> no, what I mean is like, is marijuana considered a hard drug? You know, it's almost like, we're still on the way to making it legal. Mm-hmm. So, you know, marijuana is not something I consider a hard drug. It has a lot of benefits and uh, it ha- I understand that it helps people out cope with stress, cope with life, cope with illnesses. Mm-hmm cope with just life is enough life is already difficult life's a bee and then you die yeah <laughs> so, so might as well happy and make the most of it yeah um drum killer asked if uh any of you have ever been mugged by a monkey gang i have never been mugged by a monkey gang no i stay away from monkeys you know people look at like these animals and like they go, oh, cha 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 I'm not much of a, I've never had a pet growing up, so I'm not mm. really into animals. I like to admire them from far away, be like, oh, that's a beautiful creature, and that's about it. Right. I go on my way. I admire animals on my plate, and turtles. Those are good. Not on the plates. <laughs> <laughs> the correction. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. A single did point out, though, that if those delivery men got caught, then their idea was not genius. Yeah. Even though they've been doing it for two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. They got complacent. That's what happened. That's how they got caught. Yeah. They thought they had it all figured out. They should have changed They should jobs. have hired <laughs> Natty as a Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> no. no. Um, but, all right. Last comment for today, ladies and gentlemen, is one that I agree with. Albert Maynard says, Jay, ice cream helps you cope with life. And I agree with you, Albert. Ice cream helps us all cope with life. Mm. Unless you're lactose intolerant, <laughs> then probably not. But on that note, I think it's been a decent episode so yes. far. Yes. Uh, it's slightly off the rails. <laughs> not much news. Yep. But hopefully you've had fun, and that's what matters. So if you have had fun, <laughs> please click the like button. <laughs> And as I try to get Natty involved <laughs> in the show as much as possible. <laughs> Natty, any final so, words? Sorry, I'm, um, yeah, I'm running late to a meeting. But yes, I thank you for watching. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, I uh, will end the show. Thank you very much. Thank you, Natty. Thank you, Carmel. Thank, thank you, you, Nim. And thank you for all of you watching us and joining us every day. We will be live again tomorrow. Tim is back in the studio. Um, so we'll see you tomorrow.